Hey folks, this is really exciting for me. Here I am looking at the microphone. I think I got this all figured out. I've got my Roland GR55, my favorite guitar in the world, Godin ACSA. And I'm going to dig into a little bit of my song called If I Could on this first full episode of Inside the Song. Yay! So I'll start off with the guitar tones because there's a few layers of guitars in there that you'll hear. Um, there is first the uh, synthesizer guitar or synthesized guitar. Uh, I don't know if you can see what it says on here, but it says glass guitar control. And on here, what I've done is I've taken a few of the onboard sounds that come with this, this beautiful little box and layered them on top of one another. Uh, blended them in such a way that I can use this expression pedal here to control uh, the degree of the effect, which is a really awesome thing. It's um, it's pretty cool. Uh, the control part of it is this button here. You can see the light goes on and off. Uh, what this does is it defeats the effect or turns it off instantly. And that turns it on instantly. And it goes on and off depending on the um, amount of expression pedal. What I did in If I Could with this particular effect is I ran it about 80% uh, 80 full with the control on. I didn't use the control pedal. Uh, and when I went back and forth between um, the verse and the chorus, I would uh, use the expression pedal to dial back the sort of spacey effect that you hear in there um, to go with the lyrics and so that the... Um, the dream state that our, our singer is in is kind of back and forth um, in, in, the, in the intent of the lyrics, but the uh, tone of the guitar also follows that, where he goes from the, the dreaming of what he wishes he could do um, to coming back to reality, and then the coming back to reality, uh, the way I reflected that in the guitar tone, is I would dial off that effect, so I would fade it back. Um, so it's not, it's never a really instant, sudden change in tone. Uh, and at the end of the song too, where he's again, drifting back off into his dream state, what I did was I just left the effect at 80%. And as the guitar chord started to, uh, decay, I rolled the effect over to about a hundred, well, to a hundred percent. And uh, you can hear it bleed out in the last, maybe, I think it's about 10 seconds or something like that of the song, where it's just little bleeping, pulsing kind of sound. And it's really neat. Um, the chords that I chose in that song um, are very, very much the, uh, the vibe of uh, dreaming, uh, very open, expansive chords. Um, that I, I chose those on purpose and in some ways they have a little bit of dissonance to them uh, which I think leads or lends itself well to the vibe of the song um, and especially the way the effect goes there's a, a little part in there like um so this little part here there's a little half step in the chord this is like a a B flat minor nine, or if you're thinking of the guitar without the capo one, um, an E flat or E minor nine, uh, and then the next chord. It's like a G flat um, nine. It's got a third in there for just a moment, so it's major, and then reaches up again. So there's the incomplete feeling of these chords. Um, that leads the it sort of backs the sentiment of the of the vocals too of the lyrics um but the the chords don't sound quite resolved and our singer is not quite resolved either in his sentiment so um here's a little example of uh i'm going to try and find where i was on the pedal of the intro play it right this time and then I keep the same chords for the verse 
If I could fly, I'd fly to you. And then the next chord, um, which would be like an A flat sus two or D sus two, if you think of it without the capo. Again, suspended second chords carry the vibe of incompletion. Um, I often think and describe suspended chords as the sus two chords are the ones that are receding. They're the ones that are, are longing. They're, 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 they feel behind or lagging. And the suspended fourth chords are the ones that are reaching up. Um, so there's the almost the feeling of despair versus hope um, as opposed to the normal chord. So here's the next chord in the song. It's like, if I could fly, I'd fly to you. If I could cross the oceans wide So it's got that incomplete feel. You cross the oceans wide. It's, it's a vast expanse. Um, i do that too. So I dialed the, the, the playing of it back. So they're, they're very spare. Um, I tried very deliberately to leave a lot of space um, so that the sound of the effect on here and the, the bass melody that, that's almost like a counterpoint to the singing um, can play off of one another. So the guitar is really um, the secondary instrument in a way in that song. Uh, so yeah, and then when the, when the chorus comes up, I dial that effect right off and go into um, much more stabilized, resolved, properly formed chords. Um, this man who would lay down his life, this man who wants to bathe in your life, forever is never quite long enough, but I'll take what I can I could and then if I could then the effect so there's a little bit of the, the sound of this particular guitar track that you hear in if I could there is an acoustic guitar track in there as well um, by the way this uh, GR 55 is going out in stereo to the interface uh, so if you're listening with headphones on you really get the I the, the the back and forth feel of um, what's going on with that. So I'm just going to turn this down, unplug that. I hope it didn't make any offensive sounds. Set this little beauty down here. Um, the next one, uh, uh, the next guitar track that's in there is an acoustic guitar track and I don't have that guitar with me at the moment. It is my teaching guitar which is not at home right now. It's in my guitar teaching studio. But what I did was I rigged up this cool little thing on a kick drum mic stand. So there's the kick drum mic stand and here are two Apex 185 small diaphragm condenser microphones both set at uh, you know level at zero. Uh, there's no um, shelving on these mics. There's no bass roll off or anything like that. But what it really is cool to do, now I can't really do it from the perspective of where you're seeing the camera now, but if I set the microphone stand right here, and you can see there's the, the plane of where the guitar would be right in front of that. So I generally would point somewhere around the 12th fret um, at the, um, the microphones, and it's, it's actually a really nice effect. It's super handy to be able to do that because my space up here isn't huge. So to, to bring in two extra microphone stands, boom stands or whatever you will, and set up two mics on two stands, this little thing is super handy. Um, this was actually, this, this platform here was a display piece for microphones uh, in a music store setting. So I was lucky enough to get it and I rigged it up into like a, a, a the poor man's stereo microphone um, stand. It works perfectly. I've used it in lots of situations. I took a, uh, a normal mic clip with the yoke on it 
like that and I just set it on like that so if I want I can set it up on top of a, a larger boom stand I've done some uh, remote recordings for a men's choir uh, where that is uh, sort of the principal sort of setup for picking up the, the choir is that, that, that dual mic stand that you see there. So I have the affected um, stereo uh, synthesized output plus the stereo acoustic um, and then on here as well I, I chose because the sound is kind of neat um, this this GR55 can emulate um, other guitars so what I did was I used a model on here um, to simultaneously trigger a um, Martin D28 guitar so there's it's like a third acoustic guitar in there um, and I, I have part of the original pickup sound um, I don't know you can't really see it on the menu so I'm not going to do it um, so I have the normal pickup the PCM model of the uh, Martin D28 the stereo synthesized and the um, acoustic stereo so there are six individual guitar sounds that come together to make that that one sound um, I, I used to um, now that's you know two of those six sounds are stereo so they really would only count as one but there are six unique sounds coming together uh, for that guitar sound um, I used to muck around with really complicated microphone techniques that really didn't get me anything m much better than what I could have done with two normal mics or whatever. Um, I, I've set up, you know, sometimes in excess of five microphones. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because I had them <laughs> uh, to, to achieve certain sounds. And, um, you know, I could get them, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not really that that great one of the neat things with this this little rig here um, these microphones again apex 185 and again I'm not an endorser of apex or Roland or go down I wish I were um, I would be really cool to get some you know discounts or comp gear or something like that um, but these two microphones here apex 185s they come with um, cardioid and uh, Omni capsules on them which means you know, if you're not sure what that means, I can unscrew the end of the microphone, screw on another little bit that lets the microphone either be very directional in what it picks up, or it'll pick up sound equally from all around it, which is really cool. Um, the great advantage of an omnidirectional microphone is that it doesn't have a proximity effect. Um, and I'll show you exactly what proximity effect is. This is the microphone I'm using right now uh, for recording the voice. And it does have a bass roll off on it at the moment because my skylight is open and you're hearing cars go by every once in a while and uh, the effect is much less obvious with the bass roll off on. So proximity effect is basically how much of the bass of my voice you perceive as I get closer and further away from the microphone. So if I use two omnidirectional um, microphone capsules on those while I'm recording guitar I can get super close and the neat thing about it is the guitar if you're playing acoustic guitars and any other acoustic instruments that make acoustic sound um, they sound very different when they're quiet versus when they're played at a fuller volume and it's it's hard to get um, that that extremely intimate sound of of a guitar unless you're playing it quiet and unless you're playing it quiet you have to if you're playing it quiet I'm sorry um, you have to have a really high gain in a super isolated room with wickedly amazing microphones to pick up that detail and what I found and I haven't recorded anything with it um, for release anyways um, I can have an average sized room here. I think I'm uh, like 10 by 14, 10 by 16 or something like that here. And you can see there is some sound treatment in here behind me. This is my little uh, parabolic microphone thing. Uh, I put my microphone right up inside that when I'm doing vocals. Um, I have a very kind of average sized room here. 
uh, carpet on the floor. I've got a big slanted ceiling behind me. And, um, you know, a skylight and glass door, some sound treatment up. What that little microphone setup lets me do is, is achieve a, a really close proximity to that really super pristine um, sound by letting me run the mice with lower gain would have them really close to the guitar. And maybe it's something you want to try out. I don't know. I just did it by trial and error. I thought, hey, Omni Pattern. I'm going to try that. So it worked out really well. Um, so I, I may record something uh, for the next album with that. There will be a few instrumental pieces on that album as well. Um, so getting into the songwriting inspiration for that um, song, if I could, it started basically with a melody. And I mean, any guitar player um, that you talk to loves to jam E minor to C major 7. And that's essentially where the chord patterns started out. Um, what I heard kind of in my head is how, how I conceived of the song was that melody. Do, 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 um, And then I just figured out, you know, oh, isn't that cool? It's this chord and it's that chord. Uh, so the, the song started in my head as the melody that you hear in the guitar part. Um, I had no intention of uh, the poetry that I had written being matched with um, those particular chords. I didn't conceive of the two simultaneously. Um, they existed very separately for quite a long time. Uh, but that's kind of the cool thing about it, right? It's a happy accident. Good way to think of it. Um, yeah, so it's it's our singers in a, in a dream state. It's like he's woken up um, from a dream of his love and he's trying to dream of all the fantastic things he'd love to do for her, um, but can't because for some reason they're not together. Um, and then the uh, the contrasting of the verse to the chorus goes from the dream state sound of the guitar um, to the much more solidified sound of the chords. And then he sings about the things that he can do. He's not talking about grand concepts anymore. He's talking about this man, you know, um, who wants to be by your side. Uh, this man who want, yeah, wants to bathe in your light. Um, yeah, and then the bass in that. Um, I'll just grab my bass and show you. This is... Um, this is new to me. This is a very, very lovely bass. Um, it's a Godin A4. S-A. Meaning, on the bottom here, there is also the um, 13 pin or whatever it is. I can plug my bass into this guitar synthesizer as well, and it has a bass mode with its own effects. But I didn't use that at all on here. Um, I, I haven't really been able to jive with the bass mode on the GR55 yet. Uh, what I did for the bass, and it's something that I've done forever, recording bass, is it just went through this. A $60 preamp, um, ART, which is uh, another one of those Yorkville companies. Uh, I've, I've had only one problem with it in like 20 years. Uh, one of the output capacitors blew and it really stunk in the studio up here when it went. Um, but this is the base that I used on there. It's uh, fretless. It's got the little markings on the top, sort of the cheat sheet there. Um, and I used a, a chorus on the base as well. Um, a little rundown of the bass line from the from there um yeah i used a, a chorus plugin um in my recording software uh a three phase chorus or something like that whatever it's called um so it's it's a really cool effect um it's uh, very pleasing to me to be able to get that sound um so easily on there and this 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 bass took a while to figure out how I like to run it. Um, 
essentially what I ended up doing when I recorded it was I went, um, you know, here's your highs. Uh, I, I took the highs and the mids right off on the onboard EQ. Um, they're gone. I ducked them as much as I could. Um, no bass boost whatsoever. Um, and the, the, the onboard volume was at max. And because I didn't use the synthesizer, there was none of that effects going on. And uh, it's a tricky one to get a good sound with because you can see there's no pickup. Uh, the only pickup is the piezo pickup underneath the bridge, which can be really offensive sounding um, unless you're working with it a lot to, to, to get a good sound from it. So it can be thwacky and thin and, and very uninspiring sounding. Uh, so it took a lot of uh, a lot of work. It was probably a couple hours to uh, come up with that bass sound by the end of the song um, in the recording and the mixing. Um, obviously you can fix it in the mix, uh, but I don't want to start that way with a song. I want to work with it to get the uh, sounds right first and then track that and then if it needs um, some work after, which generally things do, um, then I'll go for it and um, you know start tweaking the sound, but just in, in little increments. Um, yeah, the strings on here are new to me, I've never used tape wound strings. These are um, the Dario, um, I don't know what they're called, but they're tape wound, they're black, they're really cool. So because they're black, I can play faster on this bass now. Uh, but I've really taken a liking to these strings. I have them on um, on two basses right now, and uh, they're, they're really cool, a very unexpected tone. I expected them to sound like, you know, like you're shouting into a pillow. Uh, like a lot of flat wound strings are, but these don't. These, you know, if you EQ it differently than what I did, and even on a different bass, um, you can't really notice a lot of difference in there, um, aside from the fact that there's no string squeak and that they still have some punch, they have some brilliance to them, and um, you can just wipe them down when you're done, and, and there's no gunk from your fingers caught in there. So, I'm going to draw this part to a close now hold my base so it doesn't fall um i thank you for watching if you've made it this far and i thank you very much for all your streams and comments and purchases of the cd isolation dreams uh i'm going to be maybe doing these once a week uh and inside the song thing and i'm only going to be doing my own songs because you can get into all kinds of trouble if you start talking about other people's songs uh, and posting them on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm only going to do my own songs. Um, you know, uh, other songs can be torn apart in um, lesson situations. If you if you want to do that, we can do that. Um, hit me up through Messenger or whatever to, to get um, something lined up. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a little glimpse inside what was going on in my head and technically uh, with the sounds that you hear on If I Could. And I'll uh, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully uh, you'll catch the next one as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.